So you're considering making that move here to Ann Arbor, Michigan, and you want to know what it costs to live here. Well, in 2024, as you might have noticed, costs have gone up pretty much everywhere in the United States, and Ann Arbor is no exception. Inflation is out of control. So we're doing a refresh of this video. We do it every single year. We did it last year, and things had definitely changed um, going into 2024. So I want to highlight those. We're going to dive into what it actually costs to live here in Ann Arbor. A way for us to make it past 2024. And as a bonus for you guys, we're gonna take a look at what it costs to live in some of those popular neighborhoods right here in Ann Arbor. So stick around because we're getting after it right now. What's going on you guys? If you're new to me and new to my channel, my name is Eric Meldrum. On this channel, I talk about everything you need to know about living here in Southeast Michigan. I'm also a licensed real estate professional and I make content about exactly what you need to know before making that move here to Michigan so you can make a smooth move without any hiccups. So if you are making a move here to Michigan in one month or one year from now, do not hesitate to reach out. All my contact information is down below. And don't forget to subscribe and tap that little bell so you're the first to learn about the current market and every time we put out a new video, just like this. Now, if you're not familiar with Ann Arbor at all, here's a quick rundown of some demographics to bring some context to the city for you. The population in Ann Arbor, Michigan is 122,000 residents. The median household income is right around $74,000 a year. The size of Ann Arbor is 29 square miles. Ann Arbor is constantly ranked as one of the best places to live in Washtenaw County, according to niche.com, the best place to live for families, according to fortune.com, and the best place to live in Michigan, according to US News and World Report, and the number two best place to live in the US, according to livability.com. And these are just skimming the surfaces of some of the rankings here in Ann Arbor. Now, one of the great things about Ann Arbor is its proximity and closeness to pretty much every major city here in Southeast Michigan. Ann Arbor is a quick 40 minute drive to downtown Detroit, a 30 minute drive to DTW, which is the International Airport in Detroit, a 45 minute drive to Royal Oak, a one hour drive to Rochester, a one hour drive to Lansing, and it's close to pretty much every major freeway to get anywhere you need to go pretty quickly. All right, so we're gonna dive into some details on the cost of living in Ann Arbor. When we compare the cost of living in Ann Arbor compared to a lot of the major cities here in Michigan, and the US, Ann Arbor ranks 8% higher than the major cities here in Michigan and 4% higher than most major cities around the US. Let's dive into category number one, which makes up a big chunk of our living expenses, and that is housing. Now, the housing cost in Ann Arbor has gone up quite significantly over the past year compared to 2023 when I made this video last. Now, the average home in Ann Arbor is gonna run you right around $510,000 compared to last year, that price was $418,000. Now it's gone up over $90,000 or 22% just in the last year alone. And if we're comparing that to the national average cost of a home here in the US, it's $431,000. So definitely more expensive than the national average, but I would have thought that it would have been more significantly expensive here in Ann Arbor. Definitely the cost has gone up around the US in terms of housing, and that shows it in these numbers. And if you are looking to rent here in Ann Arbor, the average rent is gonna cost you right around 1585 per month. Now, last year we made this video for comparison, the rent was $1,400 per month. And that's typically a one bedroom or a studio apartment here in Ann Arbor, but those rents have definitely gone up uh, quite significantly over the past year just due to housing demands. And if you're somebody that's moving here and you're considering renting because maybe you're gonna, only gonna be here for two to three years, it's always a good idea to run the numbers and see what makes the most sense, whether renting versus buying is a better decision for you. Because I've ran the numbers quite often and if you're looking at it from a long-term investment perspective, you could actually buy a home and keep some of that equity if the appreciation continues year over year. And Ann Arbor has proven that the appreciation keeps going up. There's also added benefits of owning a home. And if you do leave that home behind here, you at least have a rental, you have a cash generating asset on your side, making you money into your career and future. So if you do want help running those numbers, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to sit down with you and see what makes the most sense. Now, when it comes to housing options here in Ann Arbor, you have your pick of the litter. So whether you're looking for a little bit more slower pace of life and you wanna live outside of the city a little bit versus being in the mix of everything, being close to downtown, having access to all the restaurants, maybe you want bikeability, walkability, or you just wanna be close to everything uh, just because you like living in the city. Whatever the case may be, we always go through that on our Zoom calls so we can match you up with the ideal lifestyle. And don't forget, later in this video, I'm gonna go over the cost of living in some of the most popular neighborhoods right here in Ann Arbor. So as we make these cost of living videos every single year, one of my favorite things to do is showcase the most expensive home on the market. And this year, this bad boy is coming in at a cool $10 million. Now, will it sell for $10 million? We'll have to wait and find out. But there's one quirk about this house that I think was really interesting uh, when I started looking at the stats. Beautiful home. I'm gonna take you through some of the pictures of it and we'll link down 
a uh, virtual tour so you can check it out as well. But this home was on 16 acres, 16,000 square feet. It's got seven full baths, three half baths. But here is the funny part about it. Out of 16,000 square feet, it has four bedrooms. I mean, 16,000 square feet, you would have at least considered six, maybe seven bedrooms, but it only has four bedrooms. So I thought that was kind of weird, but it's got its own pool, its own gated community, well, its own gated 16 acres um, for that matter. And this place is really cool. It's got a lot of great things, but it was Frank Lloyd Wright inspired, which is a mid-century modern architect um, who I absolutely love. There's so many mid-century moderns, you know, here in, in Metro Detroit and all over Michigan. And he did, did a lot in the whole entire United States, but um, I love finding these gems and this is a really cool home. So hope you guys enjoy it. The next category we're gonna take a look at is groceries here in Ann Arbor. Now on average, Ann Arbor is 2.6% higher than the national average. And that goes for a lot of the food inflation that we've seen here in Ann Arbor and all over Michigan and the United States. So compared to most other cities, I don't know if the data's out with the inflation yet, but as of right now, the data that we are seeing states it's 2.6% higher than most major cities in the US. Here in Ann Arbor, we have grocery stores like Meyer, Kroger, um, some of the local regional ones. And then you also have some of the national ones like Whole Food, Trader Joe's. Um, another local one is Plum Market, which is a lot of people's favorite. They do source a lot of the produce and things here locally in Michigan. So people tend to like that. And then of course you do have farmer's markets downtown um, in Carytown on Saturdays. And then you also have an artisan market on Sundays as well. You can check out, it's really cool. And if you're wondering if there's a Costco here in Ann Arbor, the answer is yes. There is one on the south side of Ann Arbor. So you can go check that out for all of you Costco fans like me. So next up, we're gonna take a look at property taxes here in Ann Arbor. On average, property taxes are gonna run you right around 1.65% of the home value. Now, when you do buy a home, the tricky thing about that in Michigan is when you're looking at the property taxes online uh, from what an owner is currently paying today, you will want to expect those to go up. So whatever somebody else is paying right now, if they've been in the home for 20, 30 years, um, they've been locked in at a uh, property rate that can exceed a 5% increase every single year. So there might be a little bit of a balloon when you do buy that home. So on average, if you're buying a home here in uh, Ann Arbor, and let's just for simple math, I know the average price is 510, but we're gonna use 500 as the example. Your property taxes on that home would be $8,250 per year. Ann Arbor property taxes are definitely not the most expensive and they're definitely not the cheapest, but they're kind of fall right in the middle there. You know, if you're comparing it to some of the other cities that are higher like Detroit, Detroit actually has a property tax value of above 2%. Um, and then some of the other cities like Birmingham, you can start getting up there. And that's just because home values are a little bit more expensive in uh, Birmingham compared to Ann Arbor. And in terms of utility costs, you can expect to pay anywhere from $150 to $350 a month for gas and electric. And you can expect to pay anywhere from $100 to $200 a month for cable and internet. Now, if you are getting more um, advanced packages like getting HBO, Showtime, all those things, your bill can go up. But if you're just getting basic cable, basic internet, I would expect to pay anywhere from 150 to 200. If you're just purely doing internet, you can get away with doing that for about 100 or maybe less if you can get a special. And as of right now, as shooting this video, a gallon of gas is gonna run you about 320 per gallon. So the next category we're gonna take a look at is going out on the town. So if you are going out with a group of friends, or maybe you're just going out on date night with your significant other, you know, what's it gonna cost you? Well, if you're going out to a really expensive, fancy restaurant, you could expect to pay anywhere from 120 to $175 for just the two of you. And if you are gonna be drinking, you know, that price can kind of creep up, you know, towards the 175, maybe even $200. And if you are looking for some nice restaurants, Ann Arbor has got a ton of beautiful restaurants. You know, the Chop House is definitely one of my favorites. Um, we love going to Sava's, but there's also a ton of other options. So if you're just going out for a casual dinner with friends, or you wanna go, you know, someplace a little bit more low key, um, that can run you a little bit less. Uh, you're probably gonna spend anywhere from 60 to $120 for the two of you. Uh, again, depending on whether you're drinking, having fun, um, whether you're ordering appetizers with everybody. Um, so that price can vary a little bit depending on how you like to go out and enjoy it. But I would expect to pay anywhere from 60 to $120 uh, for just the two of you. Now, if you are looking for some cool spots, uh, Pretzel Bells is a great casual place. Um, you also have Isolitas, which is a great tapas Mexican restaurant. Can get a little bit more expensive because you're paying for every single 
um, tapas plate that comes to the table, but we actually enjoy that. So it's really cool to enjoy um, you know, some different cuisines with friends and just try a little bit of everything. So that's a great place to go, share plates and uh, really just enjoy a night out. And as promised, we're gonna take a look at the cost of living in some of those popular neighborhoods here in Ann Arbor. So we're gonna dive into the computer and show you guys exactly what those homes look like, what they're selling for, so you can get an idea of what some of the architecture, what some of the homes you know, look like, and more importantly, what they're going for. And we'll be able to see what they're listed for and actually what they sold for, so you know exactly how competitive you might need to be going into 2024. So the first neighborhood we're gonna dive into is Burns Park. Now this is a popular one, and we have, let me just zoom out here, um, just to give you proximity, Burns Park is out on the south side of Ann Arbor, and we got Burns Park, um, Lower Burns Park, and then we got North Burns Park. So right in the dab in the middle here is Burns Park, which is also Burns Park Elementary, which is this building. Um, fun fact, this used to actually be the old fairgrounds. So this ring of trees um, provided a, a piece of shade for all the vendors as you could walk around, you know, the track there. Um, but as of now, they have tennis courts. Um, they do have some pickleball courts. This is where the senior center is as well. They got a basketball court over here, pavilion with some bathrooms um, in it and a little parking area back here. And then they have a kid's playscape, uh, which is right here. So the kids use this field. Um, you know, they set up soccer fields. They have their field day, you know, for Burns Park Elementary over here as well. But let's take a look at some of the homes, you know, in Burns Park. Um, so this one and the prices range, you know, anywhere from 800,000 on up to um, 2.5 or $3 million in Burns Park. You still can find some homes um, a little bit lower than that. I know there have been some homes that have sold around the, the five to 600,000 range, but for the majority of them, here's one for 615, but for the majority of them, um, you're gonna find them anywhere from 800 on up into the millions. So let's take a look at this one, give you some ideas of, of what this looks like. So more of a, a narrow stick built house, made some great updates in here, absolutely phenomenal. Um, a lot of these homes may not have garages as well, uh, but this one actually looks pretty, pretty updated. So really cool hardwood floors, um, updated open space, which is really cool as well. All right, so there's that one. Let's take a look back at this one that sold for 1.7. Right, so this one has been updated as well. You can you can tell they've redone the porch. Um, really good curb appeal on this one. Beautiful inside, more of a modern modern design. Um, they did thick baseboards, uh, industrial steel railings going up, nice hardwood floors. And again, a lot of these homes you wouldn't find um, openness. So when they redid a lot of these homes. Um, they cut through, put support beams in, and have, have really opened them up, which is really cool to see. So again, this is modern look. I always like getting to the kitchens because that tells a lot about the updates that they made in the home. You know, we're looking at the kitchen. Um, so exposed brick here, and here's the kitchen. So we got an island with a butcher, bar, butcher block countertop. Um, is that a goat staring at us? Man, that's a, that's a cool painting. Uh, this is a goat. So we got a secondary kitchen here as well. And this is, I believe, a um, this is the full kitchen. So really cool, lots of lots of counter space and lots of storage in here as well. And this range stove is absolutely cool. I think that's red. Yeah, it is red. I like that. I dig it. So cool backsplash on the subway tile. Um, if you're gonna have a remodeled kitchen, you gotta have your pot filler right on the stove. Pot fillers right on the stove. So great addition here. So. This is the type of home you'll, you'll likely see in um, in Burns Park. So that's 1.7. Let's take a look at one more before I move on. This one is 1.3, and I'm just grabbing these randomly. These are the homes that have sold in the last 12 months here. Um, so this is more of an estately style home. No pictures for this one. All right, let's go take a look. Whoops. Yeah, well, here, let's take a look at this too, because this is a good idea of the homes that have sold here. So ranging from 1.2, on up into 1.3, 1.4 here as well. All right, so 2009, the residence school. This is a big home. Three car garage, stamped concrete driveway, all brick home. It's always good. There's a lot of all brick homes in Burns Park as well, uh, making the architecture look really cool. So, all right. A lot of great woodwork in the home, hardwood floors. 
you'll see some of these detail pieces, um, fireplaces and the mantle, completely custom. Love these exposed beams in here and the tray ceilings. This is a this is an old school dining room, classic. I wouldn't say old school, but classic dining room in this type of home. This home actually reminds me of kind of the uh, if we go back to the main picture, kind of reminds me of the home from Home Alone. Um, it's got that that curb appeal to it. Not exactly like it, but very similar. What do you mean? Gosh, I'm eating junk. All right, so that's Burns Park. All right, so the next neighborhood we're going to take a look at is the Old West Side. So zooming out here. Um, the Old West Side is located just on the west south side of Ann Arbor, downtown Ann Arbor. Um, as we zoom in here, the Old West Side kind of spans uh, from 8th and Washington, and then it kind of zigzags over um, to Main Street here, and then goes all the way up to Pauline, and then over to 7th. So it's kind of this block right here that I'm, I'm zoomed in on. Um, so let's take a look at some of the homes. You'll find a lot of stick builds. So these homes were typically built in the 1900s, early 1900s. Um, prices range anywhere from, you know, 300,000 on up into a million. And it really just depends on the condition of the home. Because some of these homes, you know, need a lot of work, they need a lot of updating, um, and they have a Michigan basement, some basements can't be finished. It really depends on some of the updates. Now, some people have actually, you know, uh, lifted the house, dug the basement a little bit more to make it a little bit uh, more living square footage. So Michigan basements tend to have a uh, six or seven foot ceiling. So if you dig another two feet or three feet, you can actually have a usable basement that you can finish off. Um, that has been done on some of the homes, but it's not common. You know, it does cost a lot of money to do that, but the upper mobility for the price range here in Ann Arbor is definitely there um, if you do want to do that. So this one sold for 1.7. Let's take a look at this one. So 1.7, a couple car garage, uh, great curb appeal. So I can tell this one, you know, has been done. Classic Old West Side porch. Um, here in Ann Arbor, you'll see that um, it, just a, a swing on the porch. I'm surprised they don't have a swing on the porch in this one. Uh, two car garage, and then it looks like they have a loft above it. Um, they have a walkout basement here, which is pretty cool. Not very common um, in this type of this type of neighborhood, but it's right on that slope where it's actually possible. So these all. So these homes were built in the 1900s. Um, they didn't have a lot of space, right? So a lot of narrow entryways. Um, you won't see a lot of closets. So when people do updates on these homes, that's the first thing they're correcting is putting in more closet space, putting in a little bit more square footage. So um, this one looks beautifully done. You know, crown molding, beautiful hardwood floors, French doors leading into this. Um, looks like they have it set up for a music room. And then again, not common in this style home to have an open kitchen with a uh, sit up island to it but uh, definitely made some major updates in this home. Completely beautiful, I love it. And they have the extra thick countertops there, um, which goes um, in my favor because I absolutely love that. So um, just seeing this, this home's a, a, a nine out of 10. I haven't seen, well, it could be a 10 out of 10. I haven't seen anything. Um, yeah, it's gonna knock it down, but uh, absolutely beautiful so far. So 9.5, 9.9, well, not that we're ranking any homes here, but. Just want to give you guys some ideas of what these homes look like um, in these areas as well. So let's take a look at another one in the Old West Side. Let's look at a lower price one. This one is $350, and this was a condo. So let's move. Let's move into. Um, oh, here's one for $640. Okay. So this one ended up uh, selling for $640. It was listed at $695. So let's see. Might have needed some work. So this is a good example of. The value is still there. Homes are still selling based on location, you know, in the Old West Side, but this home might need some updates. The two-car garage. Again, beautiful woodwork, and this could all be restored, but, you know, these floors have seen better days back here. Okay, not everyone's cup of tea on the colors, um, so you can expect some updates with that. Ooh, wow, look at that dragon. Oof, that is something. All right, just keeps getting better. I love the uh, the artwork. So this is total like artsy, artsy fartsy here in Ann Arbor, which is really cool. Um, but um, some if somebody doesn't like that and they like the location, they're gonna have to redo that. So you know that's everybody's preference. Um, kind of a weird countertop angle here. So I think you know the space in the kitchen could probably be a little bit better used if they started knocking out some walls and, and putting some more supports in. 
But you know, just again, going through this, not nitpicking homes here. Um, we'll do more of that as as the home search, you know, continues. So you know, you guys can look at different options, look at different things. But again, just want to give you some perspective on what homes look like here in Ann Arbor and the prices that they're going for in these neighborhoods. You know, so that is the Old West Side. So the next neighborhood we're going to take a look at is Water Hill. Now, this is a very popular neighborhood, which is walkable to downtown Ann Arbor, especially Carytown. So if you are going to be wanting to walk to the farmer's market or maybe even you're commuting to the hospital system, this is a great neighborhood to live in because the proximity to um, both of those are really close. So Water Hill is just here on the north side of Ann Arbor. Um, just to give you perspective, it goes all the way up and backs up to M14 here. Um, so you do have the Huron River that cuts through and kind of divides the north side of Ann Arbor and Water Hill. So if you just travel over right here north of Carytown, um, you'll be able to get to the hospital system. And then if you're traveling to the university, which is all of this right here. Um, fun fact is University of Michigan is the largest real estate holder in Ann Arbor, period. So Water Hill, let's take a look at some of the homes. Price ranges can go anywhere from 400,000 on up into the millions. Um, average price point, you know, for a good solid home is gonna run you right around 600 to 800,000 in Water Hill. Um, the homes that you do see on the lower side, they may need some work. Again, you know, a lot of people have lived in Ann Arbor for quite some time. It's a very popular neighborhood, uh, very popular city. So people have lived here, you know, for a very long time and now start some of these homes are starting to turn over, which do need a lot of work. So competition comes in with investors, first time home buyers, and people that just want to live in Ann Arbor. And Water Hill is definitely one of those destination neighborhoods um, that commands a little bit more competition when it comes to the homes. So Let's take a look at a home at 550. So this was a uh, three bedroom, three bath, a Victorian style home. Okay, so this was a, uh, I can just tell from the sticker here, uh, plaque on the on the side, this was an investment property or rental. Okay, this is a cash flow and property. So we're gonna take a look at a different one. Um, no pictures available for that one. All right, so this one sold for 635, four bedroom, two bath. All right, so quickly, um, it was listed for 575, sold for 635. So you can see how much over asking um, they did, uh, you know, offer there. This is a Cape Cod style, and let's take a look on the inside. One car garage. Okay, so beautifully, you know, kept. Um, might even be hard, new hardwood floors, or maybe even looks like an engineered, you know, floor in there just I can tell by the dimension of it. Um, but everything looks really updated. Let's see what they've done with the kitchen. So kitchen was one of those areas they didn't really touch. Um, you can kind of tell some of these cabinets were, were original. So even with, you know, having updated countertops, updated appliances, but the, the cabinets may or may not be original. It's kind of hard to tell from these pictures. I would just, you know, venture out because I can see the hinges that there are original cabinets in there. Um, it still went for over asking, right? Just because of the location, you know, here in Water Hill. So that is one one home in Water Hill. Let's take a look at this one for 702. All right, so this one's a little bit closer to um, Carytown. And this one went, well, this one was listed at 599 and sold for 702. Um, so that's quite a bit above asking. This one was built in 1901, three bedrooms, one and a half baths. But location, again, is everything in here. And I don't think this one even has a garage. Well, it has a one-car garage. So beautiful Victorian. Again, the woodwork in these homes, I'm always in awe of. Um, they just did it right back then. So hardwood floors and oop, some green in there. Um, you can see the old old heat system. So radiant heating you know, going throughout. It's a radiator. Um, little small dining room here off the kitchen. I saw some exposed brick, which is really cool. You see some of that, um, you know, in, in homes from time to time, which I think is great. And here's the kitchen. So they have updated the cabinets um, in the kitchen, uh, new hardwood floors in here. And they do have some stairs leading upstairs here in the kitchen. So there's two stairwells um, in this home, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I can definitely see this home's got a lot of character to it. They got the stovetop on the island here. Um, you know, definitely can see how somebody would would definitely you know like this house with the proximity to downtown and the updates that they've made in this home you know really nice as well so very well kept you'll find that in Ann Arbor people just take care of their things you know it's the price of the homes 
you know, keep going up if you take really good care of them um, and you're gonna get the most amount of money if you have those updates. So that is Water Hill. There's one last neighborhood I do wanna touch on and that is Carytown. You know, so if you are gonna be living in Ann Arbor and you do wanna live downtown, uh, Carytown is one of the most popular areas uh, for a lot of people to live. There is a lot of rentals there. So if you do, you know, not wanna buy and you wanna rent, um, you can always find rentals in Carytown. Price will be a little bit more expensive. But this home went for 1.4 and this was a condo. So it was listed at 1.495 or 1.595. They dropped the price to 1.495 and then it ultimately sold for 1.4. Um, so this condo here in Carytown, let's take a look at it because they do have some really nice condos. And you know, that's majority of what you're gonna find in, in Carytown is lofts, um, these townhome style condos which are great so this was a, a nice one that sold for 1.4 and oop, you even got an elevator with a phone in there so that's cool so a nice open kitchen some built-in bookshelves uh, i like that tile on the on the fireplace as well okay french doors i'm assuming leading out onto a patio or a deck here which we'll find out in a second okay nice high cabinets they left that little gap i wish they would just go all the way up and again you know they're not not the builder on these things but these are the little details that do matter um still sold for 1.4 but take the cabinets all the way up builders if you're watching i would i'd really appreciate it um so yeah this one yep here's the patio or the deck that goes out and you got a little community here um you got your your driveway parking is underneath um your condo so you can pull in your garage walk right up the stairs and you're right there so there's your garage all right so that's a good one here in carrytown let's take a look at one more uh two oh this one sold for 1.45 here's another condo so this is more loft style and these are off of uh, Kingsley Street, which is a lot of condos are being built off Kingsley. Um, I've covered some of the new condo developments down there on other videos on the channel. Uh, but this one's beautifully updated. Uh, you got a great loft, great amenities in here, close to everything. Walkability downtown is great. Um, beautiful open kitchen, sit up island there, which is great. Got all the workstation over here. So pretty much everything you need. So if you do want to live downtown, um, this is what you could expect to kind of look at lots of different condo options. You do have multifamily down there. So if you did want to buy a multifamily, live in one side of it and rent out the other. So you could have some, some cash flow coming in. Um, but there's plenty of options here in Ann Arbor, like I said, depending on the lifestyle that you're going for. All right, so this condo, yeah, lots of open space here. So yeah, this is great. So more of a loft style condo and beautiful updates. So I just wanted to cover those four neighborhoods here in Ann Arbor, some of the most popular neighborhoods. There are other ones, you know, things I didn't cover are Arbor Hills. You know, you got the Dickens neighborhood, you got Eber White. Um, all those areas are absolutely beautiful. So if you do have questions about any of the neighborhoods here in Ann Arbor, definitely drop a comment down below or better yet, reach out to us. If you do have questions, I'll be happy to answer those. We always like set up a Zoom call and going through what your lifestyle is to give you the best information to make the best decisions when moving here to Michigan. So if this information was helpful, you guys go ahead and subscribe, tap that bell so you're the first to learn about the current market and every time we put out a new video just like this. And if you do need more information on moving here to Michigan, check out these other videos on the channel and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.